everybody, I'm Steph Hodge here with Sarah from Renegade Game Studio, and we get to look at Athenium. I hope I got it right this time. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's good to see you. Um, I'm Sarah Erickson, and this is Athenium, the Mystic Library from Renegade Game Studios. And we're really excited about this one because it is a game where you get to play as sort of this sorcerer of libraries because that just sounds awesome right <laughs> yeah it does. and and so this game is filled with all sorts of really really cool components um but at its core it's really a puzzle drafting game so you're going to have a series of cards you start out with the a set you'll draft all those and then you'll get a set of b cards and then draft those as well and each one of those cards perfect it has two different parts to it so it's got the top side of the card and the bottom side of the card um so if you can see one of those uh oops yep on the a and b cards perfect so that bottom side of the card is what you're going to get if you draft that card so that'll show you things like books or you can rearrange stuff because the goal of this game is to be able to put books in your shelves which you each have your own personal shelf player board and try to get certain patterns which will get you points so you can see that each one of these books has a certain color to it and the patterns are going to be either color or shape related and once you put a book on your shelf you can't rearrange those so you're going to choose those cards that you want um, and like i said you get whatever is in the bottom part of the card and then the person on your left will get what's it ever in the top left corner of the card and whoever is on your right gets whatever is in the top right so after you choose a card that you're going to draft you put it on the table and then everybody gets to collect all of those items whether they're books or being able to rearrange or picking things out of this fancy bag, there's lots of different things that you get to do. So you're going to draft those, draft one of those cards, put your items onto your shelf, and those books are actually these little tiles up here in these small containers. So let's say you've picked that card, it allows you to choose one of these books and put it in your library. So you would pick whatever color is referenced on your card. So let's just say, for example, uh, it's a blue one. So you would take a blue book because of the card that you drafted. So let's say you grab a blue book and then you can put it anywhere you want into your shelf, but you won't be able to rearrange that unless you get a special rearrange action. So let's just say you go ahead and do that. You would also get all of the books from the other people who drafted around you. You'd put those into your bookshelf and then you go ahead and you draft. Oh, and then if you have any of matching patterns on those cards on the main board. So if you want to go ahead and point to those cards on the main board, the objective cards, yep, perfect. So those will all have really specific objectives and it'll be a setup of those books in a particular order. And those colors, if you have those matching in your own bookshelf, will get you a number of points. But only if you have a magic wand that you can use to claim that objective. And you can also collect a magic wands in a few different ways. Um, one of the ways is through those cards, but then also whenever you fill up one of your whole bookshelf areas, you'll see it's broken up into five different zones. If you fill up a whole zone, then there will be a little tiny spider marker sitting in there. And when you fill up your bookshelf, the spider doesn't have a spot to live anymore. So you collect that spider, give him a new home somewhere else, and then he'll give you as a reward something special. And you get a pick. It's um, either a wand or a book or an extra even side bookshelf. So there's lots of little tiny things that he can help you out with. So you're trying to collect these books, put them in the right place, rearrange them as necessary if you get that action, and try and match those with those objective cards. And that's really the gist of the game. Of course, there's lots of little puzzly decisions that you're making as you're trying to arrange those different books in the right place. And occasionally, you'll also get to draw these tokens out of the bag, which are going to be things like extra books that you can put in your bookshelf. Um, they on the back side of all of these is a candle, and those candles can be placed in the top part of your board to get extra points, help you read. Those are always a good thing. Um, and then they also have a few other little little bonuses, like you can get wands and other things from those as well. So, and the one on the left there is just a, a random book, any color you want. So yeah, those that's what you get out of the bag. 
Um, and that's how you fill up your shelf. So you play several cards from the A deck. Um, you draw, depending on the player count, you draw those cards, you draft all of those cards one at a time, playing all of your items in between, and then you draft a set of B cards. And once you're done drafting, you just count up points and that's the end of the game. Cool. I, I have a question about the book. So I see that some are placed on top of each other. Now, do they have to be placed on top of each other in one shelf? Or can it be like Nikki has it on the table with the blue on top, with the pink on top of that blue? Yeah, like, that's a really good question. There actually are several rules about how you can place books on your shelf. So as you can see, each of the books that she placed are absolutely legal because they're touching the edges of the bookshelf. It's really hard to get books to stand up all on their own in the middle of the <laughs> shelf. So they need something to lean up against too. So you always need to have a book being supported on either the side or on the top, um, or I mean the, the bottom of it. So she co correctly placed these. If you're trying to match one of those objective cards, it does need to be within the same shelf. And even ah. some of those objective, shell, objective cards will tell you exactly which shelf it needs to be inside of. So if it has an extra wow. requirement on the upper right hand side of the card, like this one she's gonna show us, it'll show you that it, oh. this pattern must be completed within that bookshelf in your, your player board. Oh wow. So it does make it a little bit trickier. And when you're arranging, you also have to be very careful about this because physics still applies. You cannot <laughs> remove a book to rearrange it or place a book in your rearrange setting um, if it would violate any of those rules. So you can't remove, let's say, the bottom of a book if there's one on top of it, because of course that would make it fall. So you just can't move it at all. You also can't remove a book. <laughs> exactly. You can't move a book that would make it so something isn't supported on the sides either. Wow. Okay, cool. I love all that puzzliness. I love like that in games. I love figuring it all out. Um, I love drafting cards also. So it makes me very excited to hear that it has drafting as well. <laughs> Yeah, it's very smooth. And what I like about this is there's so many familiar elements. If you have played a fair number of games, you're going to be able to jump right in, read the rule book super fast. All of it's going to make sense and you're just going to get to start playing. And if you've never played a game before, this is also going to be an easy one to learn some of those concepts. If you've never done a drafting game before, you'll get to learn about drafting in a super simple way. There's nothing crazy or funky that goes on either. Um, I, I think our helper hand is also showing off one of the other cool things about this game. The, every single book in this game has a completely unique title. And every one of those little tokens, and there are so many tokens in this game, every one of them is totally unique. And all of these were written by this fantastic author, game designer, um, RPG expert, Banana Chan. And she wrote all of these in about one weekend. She's just amazing. So it's fun to work That's with so her cool. and she put all sorts of silly little extra flavor into this game. Oh my God, I love that. It seems like a great follow-up to Ex Libris. Uh, so if you're in a really booky kind of thinky mood, you can play both games back to back. <laughs> I know I would like that. Nice. Yeah, it's been surprising how many people just love libraries and how they were a really special part of a lot of our lives. I know my mom was a librarian, so I grew up in a library, but it seems like a lot of other people have had some good experiences there too. So I think the idea of jumping into this mystic library with these magical things happening and these silly uh, flavorful books that you can put on your shelf is just really enjoyable. So I've had a lot of fun playing this one. Um, this is actually coming out in just a few, about a month or so. Um, and this actually releases on September 30th. So actually about two months, we're a little bit out, but we're gonna be allowing people to play this full demo full game on Tabletopia all next weekend. Ooh. So if you want to join us during Gen Con, we're going to have this available to play and let people actually check it out for themselves. Of course, Tabletopia is sort of a little bit of a different experience. You get a, you don't get to touch all those tokens and have that tactile thing moving <laughs> everything around, but you'll definitely get to know if you like this game. Oh, so that sounds awesome. So Gen, uh, Gen on next week, you can check it out with the Renegade. They have some events going on. Otherwise, in a couple short months. I mean, what's time these days anyway? Two months is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll have it at your table in no time. <laughs> 
I it's also feel like, like if you wanted to play this as a two-player game, it would be a pretty good one for playing over Skype or Zoom if you wanted to try that out because you do draft still as a two-player game. And if you do that, then you just get both of the items on the top of the card if you're, when your opponent passes that to you. And then you just swap your decks or the, the cards that you haven't drafted yet, just like you would in a normal draft. So it does actually work as a two-player game as well. And that would be, like I said, pretty easy to play with just a web camera over Zoom. No, I totally would do that. Um, I do, there is a, is there, do you have anything to share about the artist, Veronica? Was that right? I believe. <laughs> Yeah, um, so Veronica was amazing working on this. Um, I know the cover, the box art, if we want to put that on screen really quick, she had a whole bunch of different iterations of this and really worked with us with sketches and different clothing that this lady was wearing, different hairstyles, different backgrounds. We went through a lot of different iterations and she was so fast so much fun to work with and really i think just hit exactly what we were looking for in this game we were super happy working with her so yeah she's really amazing um also the studio that worked on this game it's actually a french studio that does um a whole bunch of games collaboratively within their office um l'atelier i'm probably mispronouncing their game we we're actually doing a fun panel with them next week at gen con as well so oh, if you cool. want to go to renegategames.com and check out our whole gen con list of what we have going on we'll be diving deep into this game finding out all the little things that happen during the development talking to the designers so it should be a really really fun panel um, we'll definitely be posting that afterwards as well. Oh, that sounds amazing. So you have a lot going on next week with Gen Con, so we're excited to have you here today. Is there any other exciting news you want to tell us about? Yeah, so we have a couple really big things that are about to happen. Um, so just in a couple weeks in August, we are going to be launching our next Kickstarter for Vampire the Masquerade Rivals Expendable Card Game. And that's really exciting for anybody who loves expandable card games. And especially this one, if you're the kind of player who likes to dive super deep into all the nitty gritty parts of a card game and have lots of different things going on. Or if you really like being super competitive and you like having one person that has a mark on their back and you're going after them and you've got special objectives that are just for you that play specifically to your thematic clan, that, that's what Rivals is all about. It really feels like you are in the world of darkness. And for any gamers who have been around for a little while, you probably know a little bit about that universe. It's very fun. Um, so that one's going to be really neat. And we, again, are also doing demos of that next week as well. Um, and then we also have another one if you're a little bit more on the Euro side of the gaming spectrum. We have a new game called Embarcadero coming out on Kickstarter in September. And this one is actually from same designers that did, um, oh my gosh, Ed Marriott. He did Scoville. And he also had a partner in this game that we're doing in Barcadero as well. So we're really excited to be partnering with him on this game. Um, and it's all about this really cool part of San Francisco where essentially boats were docking um, right there in the bay and there wasn't enough room in the city. And so in order to create more land, they started building up around these boats. And at some point they actually just got taken down and built on top of. So this is all a game about building these neat elaborate buildings on top of these boats in a very three-dimensional way. And so there's plastic pieces, there's objectives and tons of cards, there's lots of nitty gritty resource management and all the things that as a Euro player, I love. So I cannot wait for this one to actually come out. Wow, and that is we're going to be getting unique... copies of that out to reviewers soon. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, yeah, that's, I was just saying, that's such a unique theme. It's like I've never heard of anything like that before. So that's really, it sounds really cool. <laughs> 
Yeah, I didn't either, but it's really neat. Like the history around it is very cool. They're called the ghost ships of San Francisco. If you want to go and look it up and learn yeah. a little bit of history, because they're still there that you just can't go see them because now they're buried on top of and there's just extra land there in San Francisco now, which we all know land in San Francisco is worth quite a bit. So it kind of makes sense. <laughs> True. But it's a really neat theme. Um, the game itself is, like I said, really like a little bit deeper Euro game, lots of good decisions to be made. And we've been working on that one for about a year and a half now. So we really dug into every little detail about it. And it was supposed to come out about six months ago. And we said, you know what, we actually really want to do just a little bit more work on this to get it really perfect. So we held it back and made it better. And I'm really glad we did. So that one's been a really good project. Um, and it's always fun to see people get to actually see our games and start touching them and playing with them and posting about them. So if you have any of our games, um, one thing that we as Renegade are really missing out on this year is getting to see people enjoying them. We would love to see people posting about our games this year on social media so we can get that enjoyment and that encouragement that we always used to get at conventions. Hashtag play Renegade. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Please, please tag us. That would be fun. That'd be awesome. Oh, we have a few more minutes. Is there anything else? I know you have like a million things. So I'm sure there's like, maybe you have an RPG coming out. I think I saw. I mean, you have so much. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We have we have many things coming out. So Kids on Brooms actually just released on Wednesday. So especially if you like Athenaeum, if you like that magical sleeping around spells with wands kind of a theme, Kids on Brooms is based in our Kids on Bikes system. So it's very easy for anybody to jump into. Super simple rule set. You can play with your kids. You can play with your gaming group. You can play it as a one session thing or as a whole campaign but it is now set in the wizarding world that you create for it. So if you want to go to a wizard school and sling your spells around, you get specific bonuses for the wand that you pick um, and the type of wood that's made at its core, the type of wood that's made on the exterior of your wand. You can play in modern times. So if you want to have your wand be a selfie stick, that could be your wand. <laughs> There's all sorts of different options. Um, and and you also play with a familiar, so you always have some sort of magical creature that goes with you and it doesn't have to be an owl, although it could be if you want. <laughs> and you build your character and then it's super simple and you just play in this fantastic world that you create with your friends. So that just came out this Wednesday, available now at your friendly local game stores. Um, but we also have Altered Carbon is coming out in a couple months. That'll be landing in November, we're hoping. And that one, if you've watched the TV show, very cool system, um, really deep and complex world, lots to get into there. Um, we also have, as far as other games coming out, this little game that some people may have heard of called Clank. Maybe? Clank? <laughs> Anyone? Probably. Yeah. Um, so we have a new expansion for that coming out in a few weeks as well. That's called Clank Adventuring Party. And that expansion allows you to play with up to six players. So if you're in one of those households with several of your kids or friends or whoever and you're able to play but you can't find a game that works with everybody and you don't want to leave anybody out this allows you to play with those extra two players that you can play with and claim before so that's really nice and also every person at the table gets a unique starting deck and you oh, cool. um, get totally different cards. We did that in Clank Legacy um, and Clank Upper Management Pack, but this makes them even more different than those. Like that was a, a good little twist on it to start with your deck with a little bit of a push in a direction. These decks are much more different. So that's very exciting to play with. Um, what else do we have coming out? Oh, Bargain Quest Sunk Costs. So if you've played Bargain Quest, it's a fantastic game where you get to play as an adventure shopkeeper. So instead of going out and doing the adventures yourself and killing the monsters and putting on the armor, you're selling everything that those adventurers need to them. And then they go out and fight a monster. And if they die, you kind of already have their money, so you don't care too much. But if they survive, then they give you honor and people are excited and get to come back to your shop and will be more willing to come and spend money with you. So it's a fantastic game and sunk costs basically allows you to play with pirates. 
So instead of just being in this little fancy town, now you have boats that can sink and other adventures you can go on, different types of magical stuff you can sell people. So it's it's coming out very soon. Um, that one's actually coming out. Let me double check that one on, oh dear. That's coming out on August 26th. Um, but right before that, we also have a few other themes. Um, earlier this weekend, we chatted about Raiders of Scythia and Viscounts of the West Kingdom. We also have the Raiders of the North Sea Collector's Edition box. So oh, if you cool. have Raiders of the North Sea and the expansions, and you want to put all of them in one beautiful box together, we have this big, nice storage box solution, and you can put all of this stuff in there all together and have it in one place, which I really always love and appreciate. <laughs> so that's coming is out. Is there inserts so. in it or is it just the box? Is there, is there It insert? is. Let me tell you exactly what's in it. We'll find this out because I don't want to tell you wrong. That would be yeah. lame. So <laughs> Raiders of the North Sea Collector's Box contains, it has... 200 oh it has card sleeves i knew there was something really exciting in there so it doesn't contain the expansions themselves but we assume you already have those and if you don't you can certainly order those from your friendly local game store or web store um, but it does come with card sleeves which we've never made for raiders before so you get the nice storage box and nice sleeves to protect everything and that is enough to cover all of your sleeves for the main deck of cards and any promos you may have picked up as well and if you order this from our web store before it releases, we also will send you the free Miko promo pack as well. So you get all that stuff um, and that'll come out on the 19th. So we've got those. Um, Gudetama we also talked about this weekend and that's a fun little trick taking game. Very, very silly and quick, easy to teach people. More strategy than you would expect, but very simple rules, which is fantastic. Um, and what else do we have? That has the so most adorable games. art. It's very exciting. <laughs> uh, Cat Tower, this is a game that was published previously. It's in our Aza Chen line. That is also coming out in September on the 16th. And it's a stacking cat game. If you haven't seen it, it's adorable. We also have Kitty Paw and Doggy Go in the same system. Um, so that one's coming out and in case you did miss them, we also started making puzzles, and these are coming out in Excellent. September as well. And I Excellent. love puzzles. Like, you can't see it right now, but my computer is actually sitting on this puzzle that I'm working on right now, and I'll be posting a uh, time lapse of that later, which should be fun. Very so, cool. yeah, we've got like all just... sorts of things going on. Yeah, I know. Follow Renegade, everybody. They got everything going down right now. <laughs> um, so That's it right. looks like we're just out of time. But thank you, Sarah. You're always a pleasure. Uh, Renegade, look for them. All the games. <laughs> We have Anthidium <laughs> right below. So that's coming out in a couple months. And you could try to uh, Gen Con next week. So thank you very much. It's been fun. Yeah. Thank you. Good to see you, Steph. And thank you, BGG. Have fun. Oh.